Good biblical morning. Yeah. I need a little bit of tea to start us off. What are you drinking this morning? Let me know. Yeah, it doesn't come up in Ashley's news feed. Doesn't come in some people's. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry for a rough start, everyone. But hey, I'm Daniel. If we haven't met yet, say hi. I'd love to hear from you. Know where you're from. Um, I am here with my wife, Ashley. We love... Rosie Arcad, she's pawing at the door. <coughs> Let me in. Lint. Oh. Let me in. Cough candy. Okay. Welcome back. Today we're looking at Judges chapter 18. I've been breathing so good, and all of a sudden, it's like, nope, can't do it. Um, Judges 18. (laughs) Before we start, I'm going to take my buffer, (laughs) and you're going to watch a video from Home of Hope. That is Home of Hope, great organization. They uh, That shoe project that you see, like those kids, literally, that's the first pair of shoes that they may own. When I was in Kenya in 2018, um, hard to believe that's been that long already. But I went to Kenya and I went to Rwanda and I got to be a part of that shoe project where people had given, you know, somewhere between $6 and $15 Canadian For a new pair of shoes, many of those kids had never even owned shoes. And most of those kids are part of our sponsorship or, you know, they're involved with the feeding programs. And I remember being in a little, well, I shouldn't say little, a church, good sized church, actually. I mean, we had like 300 kids in there eating food and we fed them all and they would walk from hours around to come get food and hear a message. And, um, and then there was about 40 of them that were part of the shoe program. And they they stayed in and they kicked everyone else out of this building. And I was so shocked how they did this. But it, praise God, it worked. Um, They sent everyone else out and then they gave these kids new shoes. While the other 200 kids are outside banging on the windows saying, shoes, shoes, shoes. It was one of, I thought it was going to be a child riot. I had never seen anything like that. But really that just means that there's not enough of us. Helping out to buy all of the kids' shoes. Really, it means there's not enough of us helping out. So, for a small gift of around $10, you could buy some child their first pair of shoes. Now, why is that important? Because when you're walking all the time barefoot, you get cuts, you get diseases, you're walking in different things, Um, you get hot dirt, you get, you know, like this is not good. This is why many you see a lot of foot problems in Africa, in these poorer countries, the poorer parts of Africa. Um, So yeah, anyways, check them out, homeofhope.ca. But right now you're here checking out Bible Read Along. We want you to check out BibleReadAlong.com as well. Go check out BibleReadAlong.com. Why? Because we got notebooks, Bible notebooks for your own personal Bible study, notes in church, notes in a Bible study. We have a prayer book ready and available that you could order and do on your own if you are in the Red Deer area. Like if we physically see you regularly, don't order a prayer book. Um, 
Why? Because I've ordered 30 for in person here and you can just buy them directly from me. Um, that's going to be a better blessing for you because I can sign it and give it to you and we can go through it. And it's a better blessing for Bible read along. So buy your prayer books in person if you're in Red Deer. If you're not, go to Amazon, go to BibleReadalong.com and it, the link's right there. And sorry to Michelle and Ashley, we didn't know we were going to buy Yeah, I'm sorry to those that have already bought them. We just bought them yesterday, so I didn't know they would be coming, not coming. But anyways, um, it's the same book, and I will sign yours even if you buy it on Amazon or whatever if you want me to. And then, coming up, I'm working on it. Hopefully, in the next four to six weeks, we will have a date for a prayer course, and that will be available in person. And online. So we would love for you to join us that will work through the Acts of Prayer book that I've written and um, how to pray. Maybe you don't even know how to pray. That's not bad, by the way. Many Christians just don't know how. And we tell Christians and people, well, just pray. Just read your Bible. Just And people don't know how. So we've started Bible Read Along to help you learn how to read your Bible, how to see it in a different way, how to understand context, maybe how to picture it as a movie. You know, see it in a different way. And we want to teach you how to pray. These are the foundations of the Christian faith. So that is part of our passion and what we are doing here today we're looking at chapter 18 and um, before we pray let's see hi to some of the, our friends in the comments and then we're going to get right in to the word of god today let's go on up here matthew's here matthew loves bible read along and we're so glad matthew you've been a part of this so glad you're growing learning um tag a friend it's friday Sorry, my nose is running today. Um, tag a friend. How do you tag a friend? Great question. Put the at symbol and then names will start to pop up. And maybe you know someone that you want to personally, like even pray about it. Lord, who should be a part of Bible read along? Who needs to hear this today? Pray about it. And if a name comes to mind, tag them. If not, put the at symbol and look at some names and tag one or two people today. That's the challenge for today. Tag one or two people. It's Friday, so let's tag people. Why not? Valentina's here. Good morning, Valentina. We are so glad you're here. Um, Tina's here. She'll try to stick around to the end. Mornings are hectic. No worries. Tina also posted in our other group, um, Red Deer CR Forever Family. Red Deer CR Forever Family. I don't know. If you just search CR Forever Family, that's for our Celebrate Recovery Local here. And she actually just posted a one-year chip that she has received. And we are so glad and proud of you. Thank you. Um, and keep working. Keep coming back. Mike Markey. I love that guy. I have I haven't seen you in a while. We've missed you. Michelle's here. Ashley's here. We're so glad to have you guys. Um, and I signed Michelle's very poorly last night with my bad hand trying to write and it really didn't look good. But I meant what I said. Pray and keep pressing in. You know, prayer and Bible reading are foundations and they will change your life. Hello, Lisa. We're so glad you're here too. Um... Oh, yes, we have sponsor training for those in... Uh-oh. I asked what the... Everyone what happened to my video? Oh, you're frozen. I think we're back. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. If you can hear me, don't leave. Don't go away. I think we're back. We're so glad you're here, too. Yeah. Things are glitchy this morning. Is it glitchy this morning? I'm going to get rid of these comments then. Morning, morning, Jonathan. Let's get rid of the Facebook comments. Sometimes that helps. Let's pray. I'm going to restart this camera so you won't see me, but you'll hear me still for a moment. Um, I got to go to this one. I got to go to deactivate. Then I have to go back to activate. And we will see if that helps things out a little bit. Um, sorry for the glitchiness. All right, let's pray and then get into the word of God for today. No, you're good. I love you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Thank you so much for a new day. Thank you for your grace for today. Thank you for your word. Equip us, empower us, help us in Jesus' name to become Bible-based, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled Christians. Amen. Amen. It's... Oh! <laughs> Ashley just smashed her funny bone hard. Oh, I'm so sorry, hon. Okay. Well, while she's writhing in pain, <laughs> Judges chapter 18. Is that the right word? I don't know. Um, I like how this starts. The Danites. And I think that's what we should start calling followers <laughs> of Bible read light. My, my little Danites. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's all, uh, press in here. Okay. The Danites settle in Laish. In the, in those days, Israel had no king. And in those days, the tribe of the Danites, so the tribe of Dan, the tribe of the Danites was seeking a place of their own where they might settle. Because they had not yet come, <coughs> excuse me, into an inheritance. <clears throat> I think some of this was actually discussed in the book of Joshua where it talked about the different plots of land they had, but Dan, the tribe of Dan, didn't have one yet. And, and it kind of explains some of the history. Same thing here. Because they had not yet come into inheritance among the tribes of Israel. So the Danites sent five of their leading men from Zorah and Eshtol to spy out the land and explore it. These men represented all the Danites. They told them, go and explore the land. Breathe. So they entered the hill country. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. They entered the hill country of Ephraim and came to the house of Micah, where they spent the night. So this is who we just heard about in the previous chapter. Micah um, made an idol, made an image, and uh, put it in his home. And he was trying to create priests and all of these. The Levites came and he made them a priest. And he's trying to do things in his own way. That's what we talked about with Melanie Mitchell Epp yesterday. Oh, so they entered the hill country of Ephraim and came to the house of Micah, where they spent the night. When they were near Micah's house, they recognized the voice of the young Levite. So they turned in there and asked him, who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? Why are you here? He told them what Micah had done for him. And he said, he's hired me and I am his priest. Like, <laughs> Interesting again, like this is, they know this is not how priests were chosen. This is not how priests became, but Micah wanted to do things his own way and it loves company. So others start to go, wow, that gives me a title and me, I'll help you do things your own way. Cause look, now it's helped me too. Then they said to him, please inquire of God to learn whether our journey will be successful or not. So they actually view him as a priest. Why? Because he's a Levite. He says he's a priest. They're going, oh, okay, he's a priest. So the five men left and came to Laish, where they saw <clears throat> that the people were living in safety, like the Sidonians at peace and secure. And since their land lacked nothing, they were prosperous. Little a, what do these mean? Means you can learn some context. Um, the meaning of the Hebrew for this clause is uncertain. So they didn't know quite what they meant by prosperous. A different word was used than they are used to as interpreters. Also, they lived a long way from the Sidonians and had no relationship with anyone else. Another context point, Arameans. the Arameans. So it's just Aramean. saying who the Sidonians are. When they returned to Zorah and Eshtol, the, their fellow Danites asked them, how did you find things? What's the land like? 
You spied it out. You're looking at a business. You're looking at an adventure. You're thinking about buying a house. You're, you went and you spied it out. What's it like? Is it nice? Is it good? Is it going to work? Is it healthy? Is it safe? Is it, what's it like? They answered, come on, let's attack them. <laughs> we have seen the land and it's very good. Aren't you going to do something? Don't hesitate to go up there and take it over. And when you get there, you will find an unsuspecting people and a spacious land that God has put into your hands. A land that lacks nothing, whatever. Then 600 men of the Danites armed for battle set out for Zora and Eshtol. On their way, they set up camp near kirath Jerim in Judah. This is why the place west of kirath Jerim, 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 sure, is called Mahana. Mahana Dan. Little C. Dan's camp. Dan's camp. To this day. See, I love this chapter. Um, <laughs> it's called Dan's camp to today. So I should start saying, good welcome to Dan's camp. <laughs> Hello, all my little Danites. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Dan camp. Today, Dan's going to take you through the Bible. Let's sing our song. Dan, 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 Dan. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm getting the look. Then 600 men of the Danites, they're armed, they're ready, they go. This is Dan's camp to this day. From there, they went on to the hill country of Ephraim and came to Micah's house. Then the five men who had spied out the land of Laish said to their fellow Danites, Do you... Do you know that one of these houses has an ephod, some household gods, and an image overlaid with silver? Now you know what to do. So they turned in there and went to the house of the young Levite at Micah's place and greeted him. The 600 Danites, armed for battle, stood at the entrance of the gate. The five men who had spied out the land went inside and took the idol and the ephod and the household gods, while the priest and the 600 armed men stood at the entrance of the gate. When the five men went into Micah's house and took the idol, the ephod, and the household gods, the priest said to them, What are you doing? They answered him, Be quiet. Don't say a word. Come with us and be our father and our priest. See what's happening here? Like It becomes instead of our relationship with God, and the priests were actually established to communicate with God and communicate to the people. This is not the time where every believer can communicate to God. Um, there had to, there, there was a proper policy and procedure, and and there was a structure and system in place to make this work God's way. But people have now they start to see the priest and the leader instead of as the voice of god they start to see them as a good luck charm so that's why micah said come be my priest i set up look at i got my my idol overlaid with gold we got the ephod which is again the ephod was part of the breastplate that the priests would wear and had stones and gems in it and and it was ordered by god Look, we've got this made and we, we're going to make you a priest and everything's going to be amazing. But when it becomes about this good luck charm, instead of doing things God's way, that's when it becomes scary. Christians do this today. Well, I've got my, my special bumper sticker. Ooh, my bumper sticker. It protects my car and it, no, your bumper sticker is a sticker. It doesn't protect you. It doesn't help you. It's a sticker. God protects you. You see what you see what happens? Like we be, we think about the thing instead of God. Same thing. Well, I've got a good church, a good pastor. Man, my pastor knows God and he's taught me, so I must be a Christian. I must know God because he's a good pastor and leads lots of people to Jesus or teaches the Bible well or prays well or whatever it is. But it becomes like he's your good luck charm instead of I personally, he needs to personally lead me to Jesus and I need to personally know Jesus. This is what's happening. Let's keep going here. What are you doing? The answer to him, be quiet. Don't say a word. 
Come with us, be our father, be our priest. Isn't it better that you serve a tribe and a clan in Israel as priest rather than just one man's household? The priest was very pleased. Hmm. This guy pays me a little bit, but now 600 people want to pay me to do the same thing. That's 600's more than one. This is great. Also, influence, prestige, the title. These are the things that he's seeking. Do you seek these things in your own life? The title, the prestige. I need to get that that next. I'm the senior leader, pastor, volunteer, whatever it is, guru. Is that what you're seeking? It's better to be the priest was pleased. He took the ephod, the household gods, and the idol and went along with the people. Putting their little children, their livestock, and their possessions in front of them, they turned away and they left. When they had gone some distance from Micah's house, the men who lived near Micah were called together and overtook the Danites. As they shouted after them, the Danites turned and said to Micah, What's the matter with you that you called out your men to fight? He replied, You took the gods I made and my priest and went away. What do I have? How can you ask what's the matter with you? So what's happened here? Let's picture the movie. They sent spies in. Wow, the land looks great. There's rivers. There's there's crops. It's peaceful. There's not war. There's hills. There's valleys. This is a perfect land. We want it. Let's go take it. 600 warriors get ready. They go to the very first house that the spies had already found. They know there's a priest inside who says he's an Israel priest. He's not. They know there's gods inside that they say are Israel gods. They're not. They go and take those things. And then the person who made those gods is now upset and has called his friends and neighbors to come fight this army. Um, now, interesting. I heard yesterday I was watching Chain Breakers Recovery. It's on our Bible read along. You can go check it out. But they were talking about in recovery, A-A-N-A, -A, you know, the God of your understanding. Well, who's greater? The creator or what is created? Always the creator. And so if I am making a God, he just said here, this is the God I made. It's not actually a God because you created it. You're still greater than what you've created. If I go to worship in recovery, the God of my understanding, I'm making God the way I understand him instead of who he says he actually is in scripture. I have become the creator and whatever God has become the created. It can never be greater. It can't be my power. If I don't have the power myself to recover, how is a created God that I made going to have the power to help me recover? Does that make sense? It was really cool when they were talking about this last night in the recovery. So um, check it out. This is what's happening. They made You made a God. Why wouldn't I be mad with you? The Danites answered, don't argue with us or some of the men may get angry and attack you and you and your family will lose your lives. So the Danites went their way and he, they, they kind of said, so this Micah and his little friends are like, hey, stop. And they just went and looked like, dude, we got 600 armies, men trained for war. You and your little neighbors are going to take us on stop right now or we're going to kill you all. That's what's happening. Went on their way and Micah, seeing that they were too strong for him, turned around and went back home. Then they took what Micah had made and his priest and went on to Laish against a people at peace and secure. They attacked them with the sword and burned down their city. There was no one to rescue them because they lived a long way from Sidon, Sidon and had no relationship with anyone else. The city was in a valley near Beth Rehob. The Danites rebuilt the city and settled there. They named it Dan after their ancestor Dan from the camp of Dan with the little Danites. Anyways, um, who was born in Israel, though the city used to be called Laish. There the Danites set up for themselves the idol. And Jonathan, son of Gershom, the son of Moses, little d, let's take a look. So manuscripts in Vulgate, many Hebrew manuscripts, some other 
manuscripts, Manasseh. Okay, so they 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 say the name Manasseh instead of Gershom. Um, and his sons were priests for the tribe of Dan until the time of captivity of the land. They continued to use the idol Micah had made all the time the house of God was in Shiloh. What does this phrase mean at the end? In other words, they have drifted so far away that they are no longer in the house of God. They think they're worshiping God because they have a priest and they have an idol and they have these things, but they are so far away from the things of God that it isn't even Christian. It's not even, I shouldn't say Christianity. It's not even Israel's faith anymore. They're not worshiping the God of Israel. That's today's chapter. What do you get out of it? You know, what do you think? I think for me, this last verse is probably the one that stands out to me because as you start to drift, it might just be a little bit little bit, little bit. And then all of a sudden, what you have as your faith is not even the faith of the Bible anymore. Um, here's a great example. You get so caught up in doing your tasks you get, at church. Yes. So you think you're doing all the right things. That's you're right. At church, you're serving, you're leading, you're doing all the things at church. So you, you think, you're, you're, you know, I'm a good Christian. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, and Ashley just said a great example too. You know, you, you, you can even get caught up doing good. They think they're worshiping God and doing good. And we can go, wow, look, I'm serving, I'm doing this, and I'm I'm leading, and I'm I'm involved in a team, and I'm in a Bible study, and I'm in a look at me, I'm so good, and God must love me. When was the last time you personally were with the Lord in prayer? When was the last time you personally were with the Lord in reading his word and going, Holy Spirit, speak to me? When was you know, and these are the things that we become caught up in. Well, I gave some money to the church, so I must be a good person. You've drifted away. You're not the same. Um, I find this. I'm in a whole lot of Bible groups, truthfully, to spam out Bible read along. That's why I join them. I don't join them to follow. I don't join them because they're amazing. Most 90% of all the groups I'm in is just to promote Bible read along. Now, that being said, I, I hate some of these groups. Because I go in and it's like, and I'm just going to make up a name. If this is an actual group, I apologize. But, you know, the Bible, Jesus, and great encouraging Bible verses. And then I start to scroll through. And not only is it like every single post is like, click amen, say amen, and you'll be blessed tomorrow. God's opening a door for you. And all you have to do is share this to five groups. And and now... Now it gets to the point where I'm scrolling through and it's like this happy Buddha's God's blessing to you. And I'm like, Buddha, like we're literally bringing in idols and saying it's from God. And that's scary to me. The worst part for me, what's more scary is that what Ashley just said isn't, isn't that they posted this. People post dumb stuff all the time, block it, remove it, scroll past it, whatever. Um, What scares me is that some of these posts with drug money, just be, you know, like wads of clearly illegal money just there. And it's like, God's going to bless you. And there will be sometimes thousands of people that say, amen, amen. Yes, Jesus, praise God. You know, I want this. Yes, Lord. And, and I'm like, really? And then, and then I get mad because here's, I'm just being real with you guys today. Um, then I get mad because we here Bible read along. We are presenting the Bible in context. And we have 13 people watching right now. This same Bible groups. You see what happens is we, we take something spiritual, the ephod, the priest, the, we take something that was actually designed by God for that time and it becomes an idol. And then we actually incorporate idols. And then we, you know, I see this with other people praying in tongues. Can I prophesy all of these videos? Can I prophesy? I don't know if you could prophesy. I don't even know if you pray or read your Bible. And sitting there on, on and I believe in tongues, by the way, but, but sitting on your camera, if I sat here for our half hour of Bible read along and just prayed in tongues and even yelling in tongues, that doesn't help you at all. It doesn't bring the good. We, it's become a, we make this, look at a spiritual gift and we make it a good luck charm, an idol and a look how spiritual I am because I just yelled and yelled and yelled and yelled in tongues and you're not learning the word of God. You're not letting it change your heart and you're not letting it change the way you live. You're just yelling in tongues. 
I know I'm off on a tangent, but this is, this is what this chapter, this still happens today. Like if we were to go, oh no, this is Old Testament. This doesn't happen. This literally is happening right now on Facebook with idols, with false gods, with false spirituality. And they are in it thousands, hundreds of thousands. Some of these groups have millions of people and thousands of amens. That's why I encourage you guys to share this out because I believe, and if I'm wrong, tell me. And if you think I'm doctrinally wrong or biblically wrong, tell me, let's have a conversation. But all I'm trying to do is actually teach the Bible in context of what God, who God is and what he does. That's it for today, guys. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts. Do you think I'm way off? Do you see this happening today? Have you been on those Facebook groups and seen these things? Um, yeah. What did you get no, out of? Just on Facebook groups. I have friends that are saved and they post some things like what yeah like 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 pictures of crystals and and like cute sayings on them like crystals "Mm -hmm." cute sayings (laughs) this is it happens today and we can look at this and go, how dumb. They didn't, that's obviously not God. We do, we are the Danites. <laughs> we literally do the same thing. And then we get a little bit off. They continued to use the idol Micah had made, last verse. And all the time, the house of God was somewhere else. Where God dwells is somewhere else. I don't want that in my life. Mm-hmm. I want to be like David. It's better one day in the house of the Lord. I want to be near the presence of God. I want to be near him, not slowly drifting away that now I don't even know how far from the house of God I really am. And the house of God here is not just meaning church. It's meaning his presence. But I believe in church. You guys know that too. Okay. Questions, thoughts, let me know. I'm going to try and post um, the comments here, but if it gets glitchy, we're just going to end anyway. So Let's dig in. What did you get out of this chapter? Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. See, now that, now I believe in that, by the way. I believe the Holy Spirit can activate and empower. But it's interesting that that's become trendy on social media because it's exactly what we're talking about, Ashley. It's the good luck of, do they actually, do people even know the Holy Spirit that are saying this? Some, some people, it becomes a good luck, tradition, spiritual, Holy Spirit, activate, Holy, and you don't even know the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying you, Ashley, personally, by the way, I think you absolutely know the Holy Spirit. I'm saying this is our culture. We, that's a great example of this even happening right here in our own culture. Okay. Um, That'd be hilarious. The Danites. I heard what I'm hearing you say, Ashley Bellamy, is you'd like to start being called a Danite. Okay, I will. Um, Were the Danites nice people? Yes, I think they were nice people, Matthew. They were a tribe of Israel. I believe they were um, trying to follow God, but they did it in their own way. Um, Melanie, Logan, Ashley, thanks for tagging them. Rachel, Ashley just became a tagging machine here. Um, welcome Ashley Rodman. We're so glad you're here. Let's keep going. Linda, Karina. Hey, Ashley, my fingers are, uh, healing, but I don't have any movement in them. So like even these knuckles, like I'm trying right now to bend these fingers. They do not bend. Um, my main knuckles bend, but not the actual other knuckles. So I have surgery in April to hopefully get some more movement. Tina says pride goes before destruction. And tra- pride is not just thinking you're so amazing. Um, pride is, pride is, that's okay. Pride is thinking um, this might not hurt me. It won't hurt me. I know what I'm doing. It's okay. Um, yeah. Lisa, Bible read along keeps it real. Thank you for that. Well, that's. That's the goal. We just want to share the Bible. Again, tell people, share it out. Uh, Karina, I'm going to have to go back and watch. It was a good read. And so go back, check it out. That's it for today, guys. I hope you have an amazing, amazing weekend. We will be back on Monday. And um, go check out BibleReadalong.com. We'd love to hear from you. 
Um, if you like what we're doing and you want to give into it, please help out. Uh, we do not take any of that money and we will not be taking any of that money until it reaches a place that materials are taken care of. Um, subscriptions for Bible Read Along to even get this posted, lights, mics, these kind of things all cost money, computers. Um, and if you just want to help out and go, I believe in what you're doing and we want to see more people reached, there's a way to donate. You can buy the books on the website. God bless, guys, and we will see you on Monday.